Hello everyone and welcome. So my name is Rohit Gautam and in this video we are going to discuss about GF patterns. What are the pros and limitations of pattern matching and how are we going to use this particular tool and what actually are we going to achieve from this particular tool and how we can use this into our day-to-day -day life for a bug bounty hunting and penetration testing. So remember, you need to do environment setup. It is very, very important. So I assume you have already go installed into your computers. If you do not have it installed, then you can install it from the official website of Golang. In my previous video, I have already shown how to install Golang as well as how to set up the go bin and the go path into your terminal. So once you have set it up everything correctly, you're good to go. Now, before learning about GF patterns or the tool itself, which is GF, we should know about a very, very important thing on which everything revolves. So it is grep. Grep basically is globally search for a regular expression and print matching lines. What exactly is this? So grep is something which is going to help us filter or search for a specific amount of data if you want from a big junk or a big chunk of data. So basically you're filtering something that you want from a very big database or let's assume you have a file which contains a lot of URLs or let's say there are around 10 lakh URLs and if you want to filter something let's say you want to filter a specific keyword which is let's say Rohit you can just grab Rohit out of those particular file which contains 10 lakh URLs and you will be able to get your results neat and clean. Grep is a very, very excellent utility, which is going to help you to filter out responses and give it to you. Here you can see I have given the usage of grep and all the flags that you can learn. For example, hyphen C, is going to print only count of lines that match a specific pattern. Similarly, hyphen H, I, L, N, V, and so on. This is from the official documentation and you can yourself try each of these flags. So to understand better about grep. Now, to make this process much more simpler, there is something called as GF. Now GF is a tool which is made by Tom Nom Nom and we are going to use this. The installation is again pretty simple. You just need to type go get hyphen u and the repository name as you can see over here and GF will be installed into your computer. Let me just show you. So we are onto this particular GitHub repository. So I'm just going to go at the bottom and here you can see there is install. So you just need to copy this and paste it into your terminal. So I'm going to paste it and I'm going to hit enter and GF will get installed into my computer. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to install it again. Remember, you have to set up your go path correctly to install this particular tool. Now, what gives more power to GF is the patterns. So let's discuss about what exactly are GF patterns. So GF is first of all a wrapper around grep, which basically means you do not need to use all those filters or all those flags that we saw previously while you want to filter something from a big chunk of data. For example, you can see over here, if you want to grab something for from a file, then we have to use these particular flags and the data that we want to grab from. 
as you can see we want to grab all these things from that particular file or that chunk of data this becomes extremely difficult to type whenever you want to do the same thing and you are doing any penetration testing work so for this the researcher has made a wrapper which is gf which is going to do the work for you and it is going to grab and filter the output from those files based on some of the examples that we are going to see as you can see over here if you want to grab or filter aws keys from any particular file you can use this particular file as a filter and let us see what is inside it here you can see the flags which means these are the flags which are going to run with the help of grep and the pattern that we are going to match is this particular pattern this particular pattern represents aws keys all right let us take one more pattern so let's say s3 buckets and over here you can see if you want to identify any s3 buckets from any particular chunk of data or wayback urls you can use this specific filter of s3 buckets.json with gf and you will be able to identify if you come across any s3 bucket so this is again the flags and the patterns that are going to be used now there are already so many awesome patterns over here but to make this more useful there are some more gf patterns which you can find it over here onto this particular users repository now here as you can see there are different patterns for ssrf sqli rce lfi etc so let's see the xss gf pattern and you can see over here the flag which is used is hyphen i and capital e and the patterns which are going to match are these many patterns all right so let's go back to our terminal and i have already taken a bunch of urls from wayback urls so let me just show you these are all the urls that i have taken from the wayback url data now let us count how many urls are these first and you can see in total we have 136 urls and let's assume i want to find xss specifically for example from these many urls so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a gf pattern i assume you have already installed gf correctly so now i'm going to type gf and the pattern that you want to search for and hit enter i have already done that as you can see over here and i have got total 38 urls which basically matches from the total of 136 urls to make this process much more simpler and to understand what is happening in the background so the file is getting read and grep hyphen ie is running with a specific keyword that is q equals to that is the first pattern that we have seen over here with th these flags next similarly the next pattern is going to get searched as you can see for q there were total zero urls and next for s there were around five urls similarly all the patterns are going to get searched into that particular list of urls and if it matches these particular keywords into the url it is going to show us the results now let me just remove this wc to show you the results as you can see over here we somewhere into here have the keyword which is s equals to as you can see over here we have it over here we have over here we have it over here as well somewhere into this particular url and the parameters all right now with the help of this you can obviously find xss into these urls now let's get back to the presentation so i have already discussed about how you can install wayback urls into the previous video 
and you can get the URLs for that particular target into your computer and then you can start testing it with the help of GF patterns. There are many such patterns which you can use. So let's discuss about the features of GF and GF patterns. Specifically for XSS, we have seen how we can run GF XSS pattern on the way back URLs of test PHP. We have seen the results already and we got around 38 total vulnerable URLs which matched the pattern of XSS according to the GF patterns that we are using. Now, as you can see the result over here, and I have also shown you the practical in which we were able to get the results. Now guys, we need to discuss one thing that there may be chances that the keywords that are being used into the XSS pattern may not match into the file or maybe it matches. But what about others which are not there into that particular file? For example, there are many such keywords or parameters into the file which does not match with the GF XSS pattern and they may be vulnerable. So in that case, you may be missing some of the important vulnerabilities into some of the important parameters if we just simply run the GF XSS patterns. So how to overcome this? What basically I do every time is I only grep equals to, which denotes all the parameters in all the URLs. So as you can see over here, when we did GF XSS, we got only 38 URLs and we did grep equals to, we got 136 URLs, which contains parameters and where we can try to hunt XSS. So what are the limitations? The limitations of using this particular patterns is we will miss some of the important parameters from those particular files, which may be vulnerable to some of the vulnerabilities. As you can see over here, I have done grep equals to and grep pp. As you can see, this particular URL contains the parameter pp equals to 12. I have tested this particular URL for XSS payload and this parameter turned out to be vulnerable. Now this parameter is vulnerable, which means this URL is also vulnerable to XSS, but it was not matched with GF XSS pattern, which means if I only rely on the pattern, then I will miss some of the critical vulnerabilities. This is one of the limitation that I have identified of GF patterns. Now, next thing, let's say I'm a web developer and I come to know about these GF patterns. What I will do is I will go on to the GitHub repo of this GF patterns, see the patterns or see the keywords or parameters that are being listed over there for XSS, LFI, and I never use them into my web application which means if I'm not using those parameters into my web app, obviously the GF patterns is not going to identify anything because it does the pattern matching based on some of the keywords or parameters that have been written into its JSON file. At that time, we will get all the false positive results or we may miss some of the critical vulnerabilities that are been lying into the web application. Now, not just limited to the test PHP, I've also tested on many bug crowd programs and I'd, I have identified that these parameter, which is UTM source, UTM campaign and UTM medium was vulnerable for many programs. But again, with GF patterns, I was not able to identify these three keywords or parameters, but they were vulnerable and have successfully reported many vulnerabilities on bug crowd based on these parameters. So what I generally use is grep equals to, 
wherein I get all the parameters and then I start hunting manually onto those parameters. Now, if you want to filter more, what you can do is after you have added grep, you can add egrep hyphen IV to remove all those URLs which contains these all keywords, which is JPG, JPEG, JIF, CSS, PNG, etc. Because we do not want obviously those URLs in which we are matching these particular files, which are CSS files, for example. So this is going to clear our junk of data from whatever we are getting from the Wayback URLs. Now you can see over here, when I added grep equals to, we were able to get around 136. If you see over here, it was 136. And now when we did this and we again e and removed all the URLs, which contained JPG, CSS, TIFF, etc and we significantly reduced the number of URLs to 122. Now guys, remember this is a small target. That's why there are small number of URLs. But when you are running these tasks on a high value target, at that time, there will be a significant change into the number of URLs that you will be seeing. So these numbers will also vary and change as per the target you are hunting on. So the final words for this particular video would be mine parameters from way back URLs or get all URLs. And then you can give it to GF patterns for matching the vulnerabilities, but it may hurt your results and miss some of the vulnerable parameters because it has done for me. Whenever I am testing using GF patterns, it misses a lot of vulnerable parameters for that specific target. So basically what I do is I filter using grep. I grep equals to, then I use egrep for better results. Always remember guys, more time equals to more win, which basically means if you're testing it on more number of URLs, your chances of getting a valid vulnerability obviously increases because others may be using GF patterns onto the same target and missing the same vulnerable parameters, which is not being matched by these patterns, which you can identify. All right. So I hope you guys understood. In the upcoming videos, we are going to come up with more attacks and we will see how we can utilize pattern matching to identify at mass scale vulnerabilities and perform bug bounty hunting. So this is it for this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you.